A developing situation in Egypt, a frightening escalation, uh, an anger really that is percolating in corners of Egypt after the ouster of the former president, Mohamed Morsi. The demands for his return are no longer limited to street protests. We're getting word that they are targeting Christians in a string of increasingly violent scapegoat attacks, blaming them for the overthrow of Morsi. So far, there are reports of four Christians slaughtered with knives and machetes in the streets, an abducted Christian merchant was later found decapitated. A Coptic Christian priest was shot and killed in broad daylight in an outdoor market. And Islamists are painting black X's on the windows of Christian shops to mark them for arson. I'm joined now by Brooke Goldstein, an attorney and the director of the Lawfare Project. Brooke, uh, this is obviously an extremely serious and growing situation, and one wonders why we don't hear more about it on the front pages of our websites and newspapers in America. You know, that's a very good point. The mainstream media and human rights groups have basically turned a blind eye to the systemic and brutal persecution of Christians, not just in Egypt, but throughout the Muslim world. There is a detrimental chilling effect now in our media because we're afraid of being called Islamophobic. But the truth is that this was the fate, you know, the Morsi supporters are now using this as an excuse, their latest excuse to target Christians. But this was the fate of Christians when Morsi was was in power. It's now, as you see, the fate of Christians after Morsi is in power, and it has just reached to pandemic proportions. You know, you look at uh, this piece that was on the New York Times website, and the headline was Christians targeted for retribution in Egypt. And then that headline disappeared from the website, and it was replaced or topped off with another story, which sometimes does happen on websites. But what's curious is that the story that they topped it off with uh, seemed to be in many ways less, less newsworthy and, and not really breaking news at that moment. Why, I mean, why do you think this is happening? Well, you know, <sighs> Again, the mainstream media is too afraid of accurately port reporting on what's going on in the Muslim world. We're not reporting on the fact that millions and millions of innocent Muslim women and children are being targeted on a daily basis. We totally turned a blind eye to what was happening to Christians while Morsi was in power. We supported Morsi as though he was some sort of duly elected, democratically elected government, when in reality, he, wrote, he legalized the persecution of Christians. He wrote Sharia law into the Constitution. He called for the expulsion of all foreigners from Egypt. And what resulted? Something like the St. Mark's Cathedral siege, where we saw the Egyptian government actually take place in the siege and violent attack of Christians while they were worshiping at one of the most important cathedrals. And shame, of, shame on us for not covering this. We're basically sending the green light that these Islamists can continue killing Christians with impunity. You know, I, I mean, it's it's a fear of, you know, sort of being fair and even handed in a way that really undercuts what the country or the United States of America stands for, which is freedom of religious freedom, uh, not only at home, but also around the world. And it raises questions about why we haven't heard more about it from from the president. I know there was a, a State Department question that prompted an answer from the State Department in which they said, you know, absolutely, we condemn the killing of Christians, which is what you would expect. But but shouldn't we expect a little bit more from the government in terms of speaking out on this? Well, don't forget the Obama administration. Remember what they, what Obama said when he delivered his infamous speech in Cairo, the future does not belong to those who defame the prophet of Islam. This from a United States president who was sworn to uphold the Constitution, the First Amendment of which protects the criticism of both religion and government. It has been the credo of this government not to criticize anyone who is engaged in persecution of those who are deemed to, to be blasphemous of Islam or those who are, are deemed to be apostates. We saw, for example, this uh, administration engage in the criticism of an individual who produced 
produced a so-called anti-Islam YouTube film exercising his First Amendment rights. We heard the entire world, you know, in uproar because one pastor threatened to burn the Quran. But where are human rights groups when it comes to the lives of innocent Christians? And don't forget, Christian children are the number one victims of these attacks. It is estimated that just under 50 percent of all of those Christians who are targeted in Nigeria, in Somalia, in Sudan, in Iran, are around the age of six who are being targeted just not just with violence, but they're also being kidnapped for ransom. It's a shame that we're not covering this. It's a story that needs to be told, uh, and we're going to do it here, and we're going to do it whenever it is a headline uh, that needs to be brought to the attention of the world. Brooke, thank you very much. Thank Good you to for, have you with for us bringing today. this issue the attention it deserves. Yeah. yeah, it's a troubling story. Thank you very much, Brooke. We'll see you next time.